All right, so describe the causes of the Dust Bowl. How does the event impact American agriculture and intensify problems during the Great, the, uh, Great Depression? Bless you. Bless you. Jeez, we're sneezing in here all over the place. All right, so, so those of you in here, I'm going to come around and check your bell ringers in. Once we're finished, I'll give you a grade for it. I was going to have an assignment here for you today, but feeling nice. It's a Friday, you know, we'll just talk about the information. Yeah, how bad, how bad. Bless you. Holy cat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my shield. I lost it. Face shield. Ms. O'Neill, do you remember that Challenger exploding? Mm -hmm. I guess that's today, but mm -hmm. 1986, yeah. Wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so you do remember it? I do. Oh, wow. 11.38 a.m. Did they broadcast it over the... I don't know. No. I don't okay. Wild. They may have, but I don't know. Hmm. Really coming down out there. <laughs> it didn't scare me, but I scared, and I've always got to flip up. Like, just from liking the fear. Yeah, I slipped coming into this wall. <laughs> 
right across from Player Lover. No, oh, yeah, some, that's terrible over there. Yeah, some wild lady kicked up a stone and hit the windshield. <laughs> Nearly killed me. <laughs> really? yourself all right here we go causes of the dust bowl what do you got give me one of them eddie go ahead severe drought okay good job so just lack of rainfall you can't really prevent that from happening but at the same time which the other causes all of them combined together and that causes some issues causing some environmental impacts all right good so without rain there you can't grow any type of vegetation to hold down this soil to hold down this uh dirt good Kara, what's another one? Poor farming techniques. Good job. So really since the uh, start of World War I, many farmers were producing as much crops as possible. So they're overplowing the fields, overtilling the soil, and it came to a point where this caused many problems to the soil. Okay, if you keep, continue to constantly just plow it over and over and over again, if you don't have a crop rotation, you're going to rid the soil of its natural nutrients. And chances are you're not going to be able to grow anything there uh, in the future. So this is causing even more compounding issues to the environment in that area. Good, good. So government never really told these farmers to stop growing products, stop growing crops. Right? They just kept with that oversupply. All right, good. What else do we have? Cassidy? Gabe? High winds. High winds, yep, good job. So picking this dirt, the topsoil, and casting it far distances. Like I said, many of these black blizzards would blacken out the sun in many cases. Uh, many people had to board themselves up in their homes and uh, obviously uh, board up the windows, the doors, to prevent the dirt and debris from flying in their houses. Okay, these people literally had to, I won't say quarantine, but had to lock themselves up for days, maybe weeks on end to try to prevent themselves from really getting injured or impacted by these black blizzards. You only can imagine, there's no Xbox, no PlayStation 5, no TikToks to watch back in the 1920s, 1930s. What do these people do? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Some songs inside the house, I guess. Uh, maybe they create a YouTube channel where they're testing out old tractors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No dirt ever scared them. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, another impact, another cause. Cassidy. All right. All right, good job. Overgrazing by cattle. I know it sounds ridiculous, but just the introduction of livestock, okay, cattle to the Midwest, okay, causing many impacts to the ecosystem and really ripping up the environment, ripping up that uh, vegetation that's holding down the soil, okay, with poor farming techniques and introducing livestock. This is going to cause many problems to the environment in the Midwest, all right? So all these impacts kind of work together, and, uh, and obviously poor farming techniques and practices, overplowing the fields, really didn't help anything out at all. So these dust storms, these black blizzards, were casted all throughout the Midwest and even to the East Coast, right? There's many reports in New York City where a lot of these dust storms were coating many of these skyscrapers and ships out in the, out in the Atlantic. That's pretty amazing to think about. So compiling them all together, right? We're talking about really how this oversupply caused many of these farmers to lose everything, lose their livestock, right? And then you have the uh, stock market crash, Black Tuesday. So many of these businesses shutting down, right? We talked about President Hoover, what he tried to do to alleviate the issues. And for the longest time, he didn't do anything. He thought the economy would just correct itself. And once that never happened, he decided to initiate the Holly Spook tariff. And that caused many more problems to a point where these governments, these countries all across the world uh, initiated trade wars with the United States and one another. So isolated themselves from each other. And if that's going to only lead to conflict, lead to war, which eventually we'll get. All right. And then obviously we talked about trickle down economics. So uh, giving a little bit of extra cash to the business owners, the rich. And did they try to trickle that down to the lower class, middle class? 
No, they didn't create new jobs. They didn't create new innovative measures, right? With that extra flow of cash, they just pocketed it. So this even created more distrust with the government. Right? Then we talked about the Hoover Dam. So obviously that was beneficial. Okay, that was something that provided jobs for people and uh, inspired economic and agricultural growth to the Southwest United States. So that was a plus for Hoover, but it was just too little too late, right? We mentioned about Hoovervilles, okay? We mentioned about these shanty towns that were formed all across the United States and these, outside of these urban areas. We talked about the bonus army, how these veterans were seeking compensation and they never got it. And actually how Hoover and the administration called the, called the military on these people to push them out of Washington, D.C. Okies, right? That were affected by the Dust Bowl and these poor farming uh, and because of agriculture being impacted, they're moving west, right? They're making these makeshift homes all the way out. So people in the urban areas are affected living in Hoovervilles. And then out in the, in the rural areas of the United States, people are just wandering place to place looking for opportunities. So you can only imagine in the 1920s, you see the heightened prosperity, but just to be taken away in the 1930s, where people are just literally living in shambles. All right, so that kind of leads us into the president that's going to get us out of this mess. Anybody know who he is? George Washington. No, 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 not George Washington. Kale. Oh, it's on the board. Yes, good job, good job. F D. You can't read it. Where's that? No, I see it. No, okay, yeah. F D R. So, what does F D R stand for? What's his name? Cassidy. Franklin Roosevelt. Yep, good job. So we'll mention him. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about his uh, bio today, and then we will mention more about the New Deal when we get back on Monday, okay, and how he's going to try to help the economy, help the people through these hard times. Eventually, it'll be World War II that gets, it, gets us out of this depression. But the New Deal helped alleviate issues, help with some problems. And some people actually critique it and say it only worsened the Depression. But we'll mention it here and today and more on Monday. All right, term for today. As you're working on that term, I'm going to come around and check your bell ringers. Five of them, right? Ooh. Nice. Five points. Oh, I thought that was one. No, no. I'm sorry. Okay, like I said, we'll talk about the New Deal more on Monday, but kind of crossover today then fireside chat fdr
prophet Jeremy Good. Juan Carlos. Yeah, they're doing a good job. How many places can we do? Uh, usually like 10, 15, depending on the chapter. This World War II chapter might be like 25, though. Maybe 30. There's a ton. I might have to break it up a little bit. I think I did that last year, actually. All right, so we got FDR. What do we have? Cassidy, go ahead. FDR, Franklin Roosevelt. Holy cow. It's a little bit more than just two terms, right? How do they make how do they let him serve for that long as president? Kale, go ahead. Yeah, okay, good. And at the same time, we're going through the Great Depression and World War II. And many Americans thought he was doing a good job at helping the United States through these troubled times. So why not con continue to have him as president through these, these uh, hardships, these issues? Which, I mean, let's face it, World War II is the biggest war we've ever seen, okay? And the Great Depression was the biggest economic problem and downturn the world's ever seen. So during these tough times, these troubled times, Maybe we need to seek just one leader through these, these hardships. All right, good. So we'll mention FDR will actually pass away before the end of World War II. And a new president will take his role as president. And he'll end it pretty quick. I'm sure you know how he does that. Drop the bombs. All right. New deal. What do we got? New deal. Kenny, go ahead. Thought I forgot about you back there, huh? Yeah. Okay. Good job. So created government funded agencies and jobs to try to alleviate the problems, the issues of the Great Depression. So he's increasing government's role within the economy, within the really the life of the people. All right. So we, we mentioned about how Herbert Hoover just didn't do much of anything. Right. Towards the end of his presidency, he issued the public works program like Boulder Dam, Hoover Dam. But uh, FDR would take this idea and run with it to a point where he'll create so many F uh, New Deal agencies that will improve the infrastructure of the United States. So roads, bridges and help with concerning issues like agriculture, building of schools, libraries all across the United States. So help benefiting uh, many citizens and our society through these efforts. Right. And we'll talk about some critiques about the New Deal 
Maybe this actually just increased the depression and prolonged it even more as the government's throwing just more money in the economy. And there's a lot of truth to that, right? There's a lot of truth to that. But at the same time, uh, this was something we needed hope during these problem times. Okay, we needed some sort of benefit. Does that sound familiar? A little bit, yeah, a little bit. All right, fireside chat, what do we got? Gabe, what do you have? You close your iPad? Radio Why? Because of Franklin Roosevelt. Oh my that gosh. Is, right? I can go. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, right. That was good. Yeah, you're pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. So, Fireside Chat, I got its name because many people would listen to these broadcasts or listen to the radio, which we talked about in the 1920s. Mostly that was entertainment and just different shows in their living room around the fire. Get it? Okay. But with uh, FDR, he would use this as a tool to reach out to the American public. He would try to really describe what was going on okay, at that time and uh, try to inform the American public of some of the questions, some of the uh, issues that the United States was going through at that time. So he's just trying to reassure the American public that the government's doing everything they can to try to benefit these people through these hardships. And this will last all the way through World War II. So informing the public about the progress being made in the Pacific and the European theater. This is the first time, really, we had a president reach out to the American public directly. It's never happened before, right? So now, presidents have a different way to do it. Twitter, right? Send it off. Right? Send it off. I'm serious, though. That's how they do it. <laughs> I mean, laugh all you want. Okay. All right. There you go. <clears throat> so real quick, I just want to talk about FDR. And Monday, we'll talk more about the New Deal. Oh, funny. The New Deal. Who You remember uh, President FDR's relative that was president? We mentioned about him during the Progressive Era. What was his name? Kale. Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt. Good job. And what was his deal? Do you remember? Oh. It was a three C. Yeah, you got the three C's. Good job. It was... Not the circle deal, square the square deal. deal. Yeah, the three C's, consumer protection, conservation, and control. Oh my gosh. Yeah, corporations, there we go. All right, hey, there we go. So FDR's new deal will have three R's. What, three R's? Wow, is he just copying his cousin's plan? I guess so. <laughs> yeah, yeah he's taking hoover's public works programs he's taking his relative square deal idea huh? all right here we go so roosevelt to the rescue so as president roosevelt's entering office okay he won the election really with a landslide and the reason for is because president hoover didn't do really anything uh, until really the end of his presidency with the building of the hoover dam but fdr will help with these issues, these economic problems with his New Deal, okay, increasing government's role in the economy. And many people critique this. It's like, well, in our type of economy, a capitalist economy, maybe the government should stay out. But in times of need, during a depression or a recession, maybe government needs to pick up a little bit, right? Maybe we need to have some sort of a balance. Maybe we need to have regulations placed so that we don't have an increased supply. Maybe that we don't have any of these compiling issues that brought the depression to the United States, right? And there's a lot of truth to that, right? There's a lot of truth. And during his presidency, the United States economic policies will shift more towards a mixed market economy. Does everybody know what that means, a mixed market economy? It's meaning that there's a capitalist is primary, right? So private business, private entrepreneurship, so benefiting new innovations. But at the same time, we're applying new social programs to uh, our economy. So government-funded agencies, okay, to help benefit our communities and help benefit society. So we're kind of mixing them both together, but the primary focus is capitalism, right? That is our primary focus. And you gotta think, the Red Scare didn't go anywhere, right? So throughout these times when FDR is initiating these new government funded jobs, there's a lot of people that are kicking back and saying, hey, this is really oncoming of communism, right? This is oncoming of accepting this new government form that was already established in the Soviet Union coming to the United States. So people were very critical of these attempts. 
but we'll mention how some of them were very beneficial. <clears throat> so FDR, here's a little bit about himself. I want to talk quickly about some of the issues that he faced as president, one of them being he was uh, paralyzed from really the waist down. And it's really hard to describe, but, and it's looking at it now, it's something that we shouldn't have maybe been critical of, but he tried to hide this disability. Okay, he really couldn't walk or stand. And it was to a point where he had to wear these really uh, very terrible metal braces on his legs to try to keep him upright. And wherever he walked, there's many videos that you can find that he often needed help just getting to, let's say, the platform to give a speech. And uh, many of the pictures you do see of him, it's just him sitting down. And again, he was trying to hide this from the American public. Why was he trying to hide this disability, you think? Cassidy? Yeah, exactly. So as the United States is going through a depression and eventually World War II, the biggest conflict the world will ever see, he wants to show himself as a strong figure, a strong leader. And if they see him in a wheelchair or maybe in crutches as he's kind of getting around, uh, people might just give up all hope, right? And uh, through the depression, there's many suicides. There's many people that just gave everything up. And uh, we just needed a strong figure. And he believed hiding this disability would be the best issue. So here's just some pictures of President Roosevelt. Like I said, whenever he was standing up or greeting the people or giving some sort of speech, he's often propped it up. He's kind of using railings or people just to help guide him or walk. And a lot of people didn't realize it either. Okay, he walked very slow and kind of looked like the Tin Man walking straight leg. And uh, people just thought he's just trying to make his waves to the people, right, to the, to the audience. All right, there you go. See you guys later. Have a good one. Take care. Yeah.